Hey guys, and welcome back to what is another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, the series where we explore some noteworthy scrapped, unused, and unseen content in video games. In this video, for the first time, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than normal. Instead of covering a game, I will be looking at the unused scrapped content found in one of my favorite consoles, the Nintendo GameCube, as well as its really interesting service disc. And as always, before we begin, if at any point you guys do enjoy the video, please be sure to slap a like down below, it seriously helps me out a lot. And with all of that out of the way, grip your goofy GameCube handles tight, it is time to find some lost bits. Released in North America and Japan in 2001, sporting only 40 megabytes of RAM, the Nintendo GameCube went on to host over 600 games throughout its lifespan, many of which became instant classics. First up, let's have a look at some of the stuff found in some of the very early initial program loaders, or IPLs that you see either when turning on the GameCube without a disc inside, or by holding down the A button during the initial title animation. Firstly, there is an unseen copyright string found in a very early IPL, which consists of a copyright reserved to Art X Incorporated, a company that had developed the graphics processor for the GameCube. If you've looked at a GameCube console closely before, you have probably seen this sticker, and might be thinking, hey, wasn't it ATI that did that? It sure was, because in February of 2000, almost two years before the release of the GameCube, ATI, which is now owned by AMD, actually bought out Art X. So not only does it make sense why the string isn't normally seen, but it also suggests that this IPL in question was made very early in the console's development. Another neat set of unused text can also be found in an IPL ROM which was apparently likely to be used to test the gameplay menu. Pokemon Kingen here is also very likely referring to the Nintendo 64 game Pokemon Stadium 2 which did release in 2000, and it even says the new Pokemon Stadium. This means that the developers were probably using Nintendo 64 games to test certain functionality on the GameCube, like menus and controls. I'm guessing there were probably a lot more texts like these, but this is the only one that they probably forgot to delete. While on the topic of the GameCube's IPL, although not unused, let's quickly go over some of the console's easter eggs some of you might not know about. First off, let's go back to the opening animation. In addition to just letting the animation play out normally, there are three other effects that the player can trigger. Like mentioned earlier, by holding down the A button, the player will be taken to the GameCube's IPL. Another alternative can be triggered by holding down the Z button at startup, which results in an alternate squeaky intro ended with a child laughing. And lastly, if four controllers are plugged in and Z is held on each one, the music will again change to some sort of Japanese taiko drum song. I actually didn't even know about the last one myself until only about a few years ago. A second, lesser known easter egg also exists in the startup menu. The texture file used for the reflections of both the GameCube intro and the menu is actually the exact same as the one used for the Nintendo 64 intro logo as seen in both The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Moving along, another thing I didn't know about until recently is there exists a GameCube service disc that was used by the now defunct Nintendo World Class Service Repair Centers. These repair centers used a lot of cool repair and diagnostic systems, like this NES test station, for which I would probably kill to have in my collection. Anyways, this GameCube service disc version 1.0 was used by the Nintendo World Class Service Repair Centers to also diagnose any problems with the GameCube console, including all of the ports and connected controllers. Another interesting note about this disc is that it can even check and detect a Game Boy Advance game that is inserted into a Game Boy Advance if it is connected with a GameCube to Game Boy Advance cable. The disc can also be used to detect Nintendo 64 controllers, which means this disc was developed very early in the development of the GameCube, and it also backs up what I mentioned earlier about the developers using Nintendo 64 games and peripherals early in the console's development for testing. Most of the tests on the disc don't work when emulated, and unfortunately, as you can imagine, these service discs are almost as rare as an NES Classic. This is because after the Nintendo World Class Services program folded, most of the copies of this disc were probably sent back to Nintendo and destroyed. And interestingly enough, GameCube sold after 2003 can't even boot this disc and will instead just get stuck on a black screen. One thing that does still work when emulated is listed as demo in the menu. This takes you to a tech demo showcasing the GameCube's graphical capabilities by showing various cars in pretty good detail for 2001 standards. This tech demo was actually the same one used to demo the console in Space World 2000. 
Two sports cars and a Formula One car can be inspected from as close or as far away as you want. It's interesting because the red car appears to be an actual licensed model of a Ferrari. The Formula One car also still has sponsorships on it from various companies including Ford, Goodyear, and Tommy Hilfiger? Considering these logos are here, most of these companies probably did sponsor for these car models to be shown off. And that's not all for this disc, I am happy to let you know that this rare disc is also itself home to several unused and unseen files. As usual, first let's look at some of the unused audio files. Why would this service disc have unused audio files you might be asking? Well that's a good question. First, there are three unused audio files with the prefix car, suggesting that they were probably intended to be used for the car demo. These are all really cool tracks that I will most definitely try driving to. Here, let's have a quick listen. The other two unused songs seem even more out of place. They are both songs from Nintendo games, but both are remix versions found on other albums. The first unused song is the song from Lon Lon Ranch in Ocarina of Time from the rearranged album, which I didn't even think was officially licensed by Nintendo. I can't find the official Nintendo seal on it, so who knows? Yup, apparently it looks like it's an unofficial release, so that makes it being on the service discs all the more strange. In a similar manner, although this time licensed, the jazz version of the Super Mario theme from the Super Mario World album can also be found. Next up, several textures and models can be found unused but left over on the disc. First, there is a texture set for every side of a GameCube. These were likely intended to be used for visualization when diagnosing various ports on the system. There are also unused textures and a model for a car and some sort of mech looking guy. The car features Mario's name as well as a dolphin which was a nod to the initial development of the GameCube when it was codenamed Dolphin. What the mech guy was for, I unfortunately have no idea. The disc also contains several unused bitmaps. The first one is of Mario just leaning. I didn't see this documented anywhere else, but upon doing some light digging, I was able to find what I think is the full version of this image where Mario is leaning on the IBM logo. For those that don't know, IBM was the company to develop the Gecko processor which was custom made for the GameCube. A rather creepy inverted version of the same image can also be found. The longer I look at Mario's eyes, the creepier it seems to get. Next, there is a picture of what appears to be dogs, which can be perfectly tiled, so it was probably meant to be used as a background image somewhere. Similarly, there are some regular colorless bricks which were probably meant to be used for the same reason. There is also another Art X logo which goes unseen for probably the same reasons we already discussed earlier. And lastly, there's this. A crude image of some stars, a smiley face, and the GameCube's codename. Yup, it definitely looks like something I could have made in Microsoft Paint when I was about 5 years old. As some of you might already know, before the 3DS, at some point the GameCube was planned to eventually feature some 3D gaming capability, and remnants of this can also be found unused on this disc. A set of static stereoscopic images are left over likely to have been used for testing purposes. When looking at these images sort of cross-eyed, you can still recreate the stereoscopic effects. I especially love how cheesy this picture looks. I only wish it was in Comic Sans font. Unseen on the disc are also stereoscopic images of a helicopter, some sort of mech vehicle, and some Gundam looking guy. Even weirder is that there are also stereoscopic images left over from the game Quake which was ported to the Nintendo 64 in 1996. Once again, this shows that Nintendo 64 games were being used to test the GameCube's hardware. But Quake seems like such a random game to include as test images when they could have picked any other first party Nintendo 64 game instead. 
And with that concludes this Lost Bits video on the Nintendo GameCube and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked this console Lost Bit, let me know and I'll certainly try to make more for other consoles in the future. And if you're new to the channel and enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe and click on the card right here for more awesome Lost Bits. And if you would like to stay even more up to date with me and the channel, consider following me on other social media sites and joining my Discord server as well. All the links you need will be in the description below. And as always guys, thank you all so much for watching today and for all of your amazing support, and I will see you in a bit.